This is the Leica Q2, the hottest and most expensive point and shoot camera on the market right now. But many people, myself included, question whether or not it is worth the lofty five to $6,000 price tag. Well, after much deliberation, I have decided to sell my Q2 and relinquish my Leica fanboy membership card. And in its place, I have purchased the Fuji X100V. Allow me to explain. This is the Fuji X100V, the camera that I've replaced my Q2 for. And it's like the Q2 in a number of ways. Both were released over three years ago. Both have a fixed lens. And both are extremely difficult to keep on shelves, primarily because YouTubers can't keep their mouths shut about how much they like them. So why would I downgrade? Well, a key reason is potentially the most obvious, the price. The Fuji X100V is around four times less expensive than the Leica Q2. This has allowed me to not only buy the X100V, but also the Sony FX3 on which this is being filmed. So let's just let that sink in for a second. You can buy a great point and shoot camera and a cinema camera for the price of just Leica's point and shoot camera. That said, there still are a few things about the X100V that people don't talk about enough that are giving me a little bit of buyer's remorse, but more on that in a minute. Now, despite the nice price of the X100V, it is still surprisingly difficult to get a hold of at the suggested retail price. And it has been on back order for months. So if you want one, you're not gonna be paying the suggested $1,400 sales price. Instead, you can expect to pay between $1,700 and $2,000 for a secondhand used version of this camera. Plus you have to drudge through the cesspool that is Facebook Marketplace to get one. But once you do get your hands on one, you've also got a myriad of affordable accessories, thumb rests, grips, cases, lens adapters, shutter buttons. You could buy all of them combined for the price of just Leica's thumbs up rest. The second reason that I made the switch is the lens. The Fuji has a 23 millimeter F2 lens, which is a 35 millimeter equivalent on a full frame, this being an APS-C camera. Now, make no mistake, this lens is worse in just about every way compared to the 28 millimeter F1.7 Sumalux on the Leica Q2. It's not nearly as sharp, it has a slower aperture, and something that I don't see nearly enough people comment on when comparing these two cameras, the manual focus on the X100V is abysmal. The focus ring itself is minuscule, the focus throw is incredibly long, and it makes it almost impossible to get to your subject. But hey, at least you can customize it to be linear focus. So that's nice. The Q2, on the other hand, borrows from Leica's rangefinder roots, and it is such a treat to focus with manually. The X100V also does tend to make a bit of noise when focusing. Have a listen. I mean, maybe this is just my version of the camera, but that's a little bit of annoyance. I thought the lens was supposed to go in favor of the X100V. So fair point. The real reason for choosing the X100V lens is the simple factor of the focal length. I find the 35 millimeter to be much more useful in more situations. And if you've watched my review of the Q2, you'll know that despite being advertised as a 28 millimeter lens, it definitely gives a field of view much closer to a 24 millimeter on most other cameras. So I generally like the 35 millimeter focal range for all of those everyday images, but the Fuji also makes a dedicated teleconverter and wide angle adapter. So that allows this lens to be either 35, 50 or 28 millimeters, depending on which adapter you use. Not to mention that without any of the adapters, the lens itself is this tiny little pancake that makes it insanely easy to carry around. You can practically carry around in your pocket because you know what they say about big pockets. They can fit tiny cameras. No one says that. I also slightly prefer the controls on the X100V to the Leica Q2. The entire system is much more customizable. Sure, the menus aren't as simple and intuitive as the Leica system, but having the ability to customize your buttons and your dials and the layout that you actually want it versus being limited to Leica's almost non-existent amount of buttons more than makes up for it. I particularly like the joystick here on the back as this really helps you to quickly select the autofocus point when shooting, which is super important given the manual focus issues that we discussed a little bit ago. You've also got the dual dial for shutter and ISO on the top, another front and back dial that is super customizable, a customizable function menu, and then some other sneaky little buttons on the top and the front of the camera. I have this one on the top program to the built-in ND filter, which can come in handy if you're trying to do some long exposures in harsher lights, or if you want to use the 4K video, the quality of which is actually quite impressive. The only downside with the video is that there is no image stabilization in this camera, both for photo and video. So good luck trying to get stable footage if you're going handheld with this thing. And like, 
The whole point of a point and shoot is to go handheld with it, so I don't really know what they were thinking there. But at the end of the day, while the Leica's ease of use comes from its lack of controls, the Fuji X100V's ease of use comes from its customization, allowing you to avoid missing those special moments. Now, of course, the true power and selling point of the X100V is its images. If you weren't already aware, the X100V gives you access not only to Fuji's built-in film emulations, but also a wide customization of those emulations into what are called recipes. There's a whole host of community-created recipes that can replicate different film stocks that can almost trick you into thinking that you're shooting film without any of the post-processing. I'll link to a few of my favorite recipes in the description below. Just watch out for all those snobby film bros that are spending $100 per roll. They could be coming after you. And that's where the X100V really shines in its superiority as a point and shoot. In my mind, these ultra portable cameras are meant to be sitting kind of squarely between an iPhone on one hand and your high-end mirrorless camera in the other. You're meant to carry them everywhere, every day, and capture moments. As I like to call it, these are moments that matter cameras. And if you're like me, sharing moments that matter shouldn't have to wait for you to go home, sit down at the computer, pop in the memory card, have a sandwich, edit each individual photo, have another sandwich, export them all, the whole rigmarole. We don't have time for that. When I'm out with friends, I wanna be able to snap a photo of them, send it to my phone, and then share it to them immediately. So the ability to have a nice pre-edited, high quality JPEG is exactly what I'm looking for. Don't get me wrong, the color science on the Leica is incredible. The edits don't take too much to get them great, but you do often have to edit them because the highlights do tend to clip out unless you edit the raw. And in comparison, I find that the highlight roll off on the X100V is much more pleasing without any of the work. The thing is, is that these moments that matter don't always happen in the most ideal of lighting scenarios. So having that really nice roll off is a huge, huge plus. Now, these recipes aren't without any drawbacks, namely with respect to speed. If you are using one of these recipes, the time that it takes the camera to save it to the card is painstakingly slow, even with the highest end of memory cards. So on the one hand, you could say that this forces you to be more intentional, a nod to the film photography that you are attempting to emulate. But if you're using this for street or you want to make sure you nail that special moment as it passes by quickly, you just might miss it. And if you don't wanna miss the next video, you should be sure to subscribe. Now, there are a few additional things that I really enjoy about the X100V that I don't see many folks touch on, so I wanna go a little bit rapid fire here. The first is being able to quickly switch from the electronic viewfinder to the optical viewfinder. This is a really nice touch that really helps to give that feeling that you are actually shooting film. And you also get that extra peripheral vision in your field of view, which is very helpful for doing things like shooting street photography, for example. The X100V also has a built-in double exposure setting. This is definitely a little bit of a niche use case, but I really love the added creativity that this brings. And if you want to get inspired by some epic double exposures, I recommend checking out Beware My Fuji on Instagram. His stuff is just ah, great. I also really enjoy the integrated flash. This is by no means a powerful flash, so you need to be close to your subject, but it does give you that kind of retro disposable camera look, which I find Pretty fun. Now, all of these niceties included, I have to admit, I do still find myself having a bit of what I might call buyer's remorse, longing for the Leica again. One of the main things is the build quality. It's by no means bad, but if you pick this up immediately after handling the Q2, it feels like a toy, which again, it is one fourth the price, so you gotta cut corners somewhere. But for me, one area where they cut one too many corners is the shutter button. The stock shutter button is borderline unusable. It feels like something that you got out of the quarter machine at the front of a grocery store. Luckily, you can get one of these nice little aftermarket shutter buttons to screw in on the top, but even with that, the difference between a half press for autofocus and then the full press to actually shoot the shutter is microscopic. The number of times I have accidentally taken a photo while just trying to focus is honestly ridiculous. And a reminder that due to the storage time required when using a film recipe, that's a recipe for missing the shot. Maybe that's why they call it a recipe. It's probably not. Speaking of the shutter, the actual shutter itself is a little bit suspect. Unlike most other modern cameras, the X100V uses a leaf shutter. So you've gotta be super careful when using this in bright scenarios because the shutter itself is too slow when used at high shutter speeds. So anything above about one two thousandth at like F2 will create some really unpleasing bokeh because the shutter can't keep up with that 
actual shutter speed. You can compensate for this with the ND filter or you could use the electronic shutter, but this is certainly something to be aware of. Another issue that I have is the battery. The battery life on this thing is not great, but like, don't worry, because you can always charge it. But oh wait, Fuji actually doesn't give you a battery charger when you purchase this camera, which to me is weird. You can charge it with USB-C, which is nice, but what kind of company doesn't give you a charger with the thing that you purchase? Hmm. Now, luckily for you, you could buy about four spare batteries and the aftermarket charger for the price of just one Leica Q2 battery. So on the whole, I think over the course of making this video, I've realized that I'm a little bit torn as to whether or not I made the correct decision to sell the Q2 in favor of the X100V. As a one-to-one -one comparison, the Q2 is just objectively better. But when you consider the ease of use, the lack of requiring to edit, and the fact that I also have a new cinema camera to pair with the X100V, I do think that I made the correct decision. The Q2 remains a wonderfully enjoyable luxury, but I do think that that money is better spent elsewhere. And before you spend your time elsewhere on the internet, consider playing thumb with the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.